daybreak in a forest outside the sleepy southern town of Leewood, North Carolina. Within the trees, two young men are sparring hand to hand. One of them is not as human as he appears. He is an alien. The only evidence of this, a six-sided gem that sparkles in the middle of his forehead. He is lean and wiry with a handsome face with a grave expression. He is dressed in blue jeans and a ruffled up polo covered in a jacket that would be in style if it were 1995. He is Prince Dex, the greatest hero of the planet Edenoi. The other is wearing shorts with the outline of the words property of the U.S. Army down the legs from where the decals saying as much have been unceremoniously removed. His feet in beat up white and black running shoes, a sweat stained white tank top completing the look. His name is Chad Yeager, his handsome face showing a look of annoyance. His athletic, muscular build, thanks to his childhood hobbies of boxing and other combat sports, his time on the high school wrestling team, and his short but eventful time in the military. He is also a former Shadow Ranger. Using the same kind of power coins as the original Power Rangers, he was formerly known as Shadow Red. But that was a lie, a manipulation. He was the unwitting pawn of Rita Bandora. Now he trains with Dex, as he did yesterday and the day before that. Chad is doing well, especially considering his opponent's evolutionary advantage, their insect genes allowing them unrivaled strength and speed. Come on, try to anticipate where I'm going to aim, then block it! Yeah. It's a lot easier for you to say than for me to do. You're psychic. If you know what I'm anticipating, then change it up. Whoa. You're doing great, Chad. You're improving every day. But let's take a break. Thank God. Chad walks over to his bag, rested against the stump of a tree, taking out a water bottle and drinking from it. Look, you're a great fighter. With or without powers. But Zed isn't playing around. Neither is Bandora. And worst of all, that traitorous sack of ooze dragon isn't playing. Whew. I know. I'm trying. I know I need to do better. I need to make up for everything that happened. And then with Adam's... With Adam's injuries... You need to let go of the past. You're a good man, Chad. You may have been manipulated, but you didn't kill anyone. You stayed down when you could have continued the fight at the military base. You have always done what you thought was right to save your world. Forgive yourself. And don't think I don't know Adam's condition isn't adding turmoil and distraction. But, uh, look at it this way. He is alive and can still be a ranger. And I can tell he has, uh, what's the term I heard in TV? Hella big feelings for you and believes in you. So I repeat, Chad, let the past go. I I'm trying. But I am aware. I'm psychic, remember? Look, I can't just leave you here if I don't think you're ready. But I also can't stay much longer. Dragon's forces have renewed their assault on Edenoi. I have to return to protect my people. So I need you to focus. Yeah, sorry. I am. And I'm ready. I'm not exactly new to this, remember? That's why you chose me to be the first rider for Earth. Indeed. Your time as a ranger, no matter the context, shows that you have some of the most amazing potential. As long as you believe in why you're fighting... I have no doubt, but if your heart is in it, you'll be able to match any of the rangers in combat. Even Jason, Adam, or Tommy. Dex stands from the crouching position he was in as Chad rights himself from leaning on a tree. They both resume their fighting stances. 
Ready? Ready. In the kitchen of the Jaeger household, a pretty middle-aged Asian woman is cooking. Her name is Barbara, her patented cheerful smile plastered on her face. In the pans below, bacon fries and grits boil. Oh, Chad? Chad, honey, is that you? It's me. Morning, Mama. Morning, dear. Breakfast is almost ready. If you could please come and get the biscuits out of the oven. Yeah, sure thing, Mama. Thank you so much. I just need... <gasps> oh, Chad, honey, what happened to your eye? As Chad enters the kitchen, his mother only now notices his roughed up and exhausted appearance. She rushes over to him dramatically, her ever-present smile replaced with a worried expression. She places her hand on his right eye where a bruise the size of a fist has formed. <sighs> it's fine, Mama. How? How? Come quick, something's happened to our boy! Mama, calm down. It's nothing. Just got a little overzealous at the gym and the speed bag caught me. Has Molly come down yet? I'm supposed to take her to the mall to look for Dad's birthday present. Not before you two eat your knot. And you need to be more careful, sweetie. We were lucky enough to get you out of the military without getting hurt. Or worse. We don't need you getting messed up here at home. Yes, ma'am. What's all this here? What are you in a panic for this time, Barb? Did the boy get a splinter? Oh, good lord. Look at that, China. It's a real beaut. Let me guess. Speed bag again. Oh, bacon! Anyway, my next invention should be a bruise removal for you. Instead of the automatic toaster I'm working on. Don't. You. Touch. That. Bacon. It's for the kids. You get the turkey bacon with the egg whites and the grits. It's over on the table. The rather portly Caucasian man with a receding hairline grumbles over to the table where his heart-healthy breakfast waits for him, cursing under his breath the doctor that told him he needed to watch his cholesterol. Meanwhile, Chad and his mother set the table as a beautiful blonde teenage girl bounds down the stairs to join them, Chad's 16-year-old sister, Molly Yeager, who, like Chad, was adopted. The Yeagers unable to have children of their own. The family sits and eats for a short time before Molly pulls Chad into the living room. Um, you're changing before we go to the mall, right? Because you look like shit. And good morning to you, too. Yeah, I'm going to change. You still have that gift all picked out for Dad? Yep. I had to keep my mouth shut at the table because if I said anything, I would have blurted it all out and spoiled it. Now hurry up. The engraver said it would take a while and I don't want to miss the news later. There's another Ranger Rundown segment about the last monster attack and about how half of them have disappeared and they all look different again. Weird. Ranger Rundown? That's at like 7 tonight. I got lots more to do today. I do have a life, you know. Go on now. Yeah, 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 I'm going. In the sleeping quarters provided by Zordon, Dex sits on the bed and meditates, trying to clear his mind of worry. He knows he cannot wait much longer. He must return home soon. The gem on his forehead glows, the familiar tingling resonating from his forehead. Soon a light shines from it like a projector. It casts a hologram of a hunched-over old man in white and gold robes. Most of his face is hidden by a large hood, save for the long beard and the light that glows from his own embedded forehead gem. He is King Lexian, the ruler of Edenoi and the grandfather of Dex. Grandfather, is everything all right at home? As well as can be, Dex. 
though I must inquire about when you plan to return. Our people are faring well against Dragon's forces, but I do fear they're planning something terrible. I've begun to sense more belts awakening in the universe. If we are not swift, they could be used against us. Soon, Grandfather. Very soon. I just want to ensure the rider I leave here on Earth is ready. I think he is, but I want to make sure. He will not always have aid from a team like the Rangers do. Though if, as you say, more belts are awakening. Does he know that there are more than two sets of rider powers? No. I haven't told him. I didn't think he needed to know that yet, considering how rare it was that there'd be multiple ranger power sets on this planet. And one of those only came here thanks to the Zadorian Empire. Indeed. And that planet was also their intended home. He may assume there are others out there. There could be a being who is collecting rider powers as Zed does ranger ones. Either way, grandson, stay safe and return to us soon. Of course, Grandfather. You stay safe too. <laughs> In an orbit of Earth's moon, a ship resembling a skeletal centipede circles. It is known as the Crisis Fortress. In it, a vaguely humanoid being dressed in green and white military attire walks onto the bridge. His head is covered by a white helmet with a red mirrored visor, not to mention a robotic attachment that resembles a small, angry-looking robotic face. He comes to a stop in front of a large man. He is wearing bright gold and bronze armor with a silver and gold helmet atop his head. His face is painted gold and silver to match what he always felt was a very commanding and regal look, complete with a black and red cloak. The general in the green and white uniform speaks, the mouth on the small face moving as he does. My lord. The systems are restored to full functionality. The cryobrig didn't malfunction. Thankfully, all of our special friends are still in stasis. Excellent. While our forces are slowly whittling down the armies of Edenoi, we'll give that putrid Dex a reason to stay here, away from that war. My lord? With Zed and Bandora keeping the Power Rangers busy, any attacks I launch as part of my contract with Vilius will make the Rider believe this is where he needs to stay, thus keeping him away from what I've planned back home. Clever as always, my lord. Shall I awaken and deploy one of the prisoners? Yes. If we're supposed to help Zed fight this war, then we should at least make it fit our cause as well. Better yet! We will kill Dex, make some money for our efforts at home. Vilius' bounty is rather handsome on powered beings. As you wish, my lord. Boskun leaves the bridge and walks to the cryobrig. Here they keep their most fierce warriors and monsters in hibernation. Soon he begins to choose which being to send to Earth. Ah, yes. This one will do nicely. He certainly loves to kill. Awaken! Now then, Death Sphere! As the patrons of the busy Leewood Mall chatter away and buzz around like bees in a hive, Chad Yeager and his sister Molly are making their way towards a store named Bigelow's Best Hardware. Dad is going to crap his pants when he sees this. Great idea getting him a new toolbox, but my idea of getting it engraved makes it so much better. Which makes me way better. And you, stupid. You know, your logic baffles me. But yes, our idea is going to give the old man a smile for sure. Okay, so you wanted to read World's Greatest Inventor on top of the lid. Number one dad inside? 
Yes, sir. Okay, so that'll be 200 for the premium tool kit and 35 for the engraving. Okay, sounds good. Chatty, pay the man. Excuse me? Aren't we supposed to be going halvesies on this? Molly turns to him, giving Chad the same pout that she has used to get her way with him ever since she was adopted as a baby. But Chatty, you know I'm good for it. I'm just waiting on my allowance. Can you pretty please float my half until Friday? You'll have more than 115 bucks by Friday. Promise. <laughs> okay, fine. But I still think you should work for mom part-time. Here, sir. You can put it on this card. Okay, then. You two can come back in about two hours, and I'll have it ready for you. Thank you. See you then. Let's go, Molly Wog. Thanks, Chatty. But I told you I don't want to help at the catering events anymore. The creepy old guys stare at me, and it gets weird. Speaking of men... Don't. How are you and that cute guy Adam doing? It's... It's going. We're talking more again, but we're kind of taking it slow. He just started college, and he just got hurt pretty badly in a traffic accident. I'm trying to get back on my feet after, you know, coming home. Well, if he looks like that picture of him you use as your phone background, he's a damn smoke show. So try not to screw it up. I can see how your eyes light up when he calls and texts. Oh, trust me, I don't plan on screwing anything up. But it's complicated, and he is a busy guy. At distance to that, we've got plenty of reasons to take it slow. Besides, when did my baby sister grow up to be Miss Relationship Advice? Hey, I date! I have a date with Eric Lee tomorrow. Daddy even said I could borrow the car since Eric doesn't have a license yet. Speaking of dad, do mom and dad know? Yeah, yeah, they do. They never ask me any questions or talk about it, though. I think they feel like it would make me feel abnormal if to ask me about guys, but that is my normal. You think that's why they don't ask, dumbass? They don't ask because you never had a boyfriend they knew about to ask after. As the day passes, the Jaeger siblings get a lemonade and pretzels and soon find it's time to pick up the present they had ordered for their father. The next morning, back in the woods as always, Chad is moving better, blocking more. Chad then suddenly drops low and sweeps Dex off his feet. The air is forced from Dex's lungs as he lands back on his feet. Dex responds by kicking Chad with enough force to launch Chad across the clearing and into a tree. Uh, hell. You did it. Good. I'm stronger than a human. I'm faster than a human. And yet you can use your skill and will to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me, even without powers. If you were still a ranger, I'd have been thoroughly dunked on, as I heard one of your television programs say. At least until I activate my powers, of course. For what, what you have accomplished, you should be proud. All you need to do is remember to teach yourself to clear your mind. Thanks, I guess, but still doesn't mean I can help protect this world. Yet. Chad, why do you want to do this? Beg your pardon? Why do you want the power? Why did you choose to sign up for the Shadow Ranger program? To protect people. To make sure the ones I loved were safe. And has that changed? No, but it was, it was perverted. <laughs> Miss Goodson... <laughs> Bandora. She took that desire and twisted it. She made me hurt good people to do her dirty work. Did you kill an innocent being? Not that I know of. I can't imagine what Catherine is going through right now. Then your goals are still pure. Even under the spell of evil, you did nothing but save people. And Marie Oliver? Was she saved? 
You had no control over that. No part in it. As I recall you telling me, you stayed down. Chad, you are worthy. And you are ready. Dex strides over to a tree nearby and grabs an ornate metal box. As he walks back to Chad, he opens it to reveal a large oval object. It is a strange belt buckle, similar to the one Dex always wears. But this one is different, with a silver and gold inlay spiraled around a glowing yellow circle. There is also a red and blue circle on either side near the points a belt would attach. This is your new rider belt. A belt to a rider is like a morpher for a ranger. It is a powerful tool intended only for the fight against evil. But like the power coins, evil will always seek to claim these powers, so you must always, always be on alert and protect the power, as it will protect you. Chad reaches out to take the buckle, and with a look of reverence, slowly lifts it out of the box. He stares at it, knowing now he can do what he truly intended to when he joined the army and when he agreed to be a Shadow Ranger. He gets misty-eyed as he understands this is his fresh start, a chance to counteract the awful deeds he did as the Red Ape Shadow Ranger. He slowly places the buckle where it would sit as if he was wearing it. Of course, I won't let you or this world down. So, what do I do? Do I just... Ah! Oh, shit! Without warning, broad straps materialize and shoot from the sides of the buckle. They wrap around Chad's waist as they bury themselves into his skin. The blinding pain is over as soon as it starts, leaving Chad sweaty and panting with tears in his eyes. What the hell was any of that? Well, it didn't kill you, so it does in fact deem you worthy. So, there's that. It could have killed me and you didn't tell me about it? Why does it have to hurt so goddamn much? Eh, I wasn't all that worried about it to be honest. And I sort of forgot about the pain part. Belt's nanotech has to sort of force itself in and acclimatize to your body. But your skin's repaired good as new, and that black eye will soon be gone as well, once you change. Are you ready? Because there is kind of no going back. Let's rock and roll. Just do what I do. Dex places his hands by his buckle area, and his rider belt materializes as if from thin air with a flash of light. Tension phase, engage! Kitchen, phase, engage! Chad feels a very familiar feeling, but this time it feels clean, almost pure, compared to when he would morph with a corrupted power coin. There's a flash of light, and where Chad Yeager was now stands the universe's newest masked rider. Before him, Chad sees Dex in his suit. Similar to that of a Power Ranger, but with a slightly more armored look, it's dark green and black. The helmet, however, is where the main difference is seen. It has the theme and shape resembling that of a grasshopper, creating the image of an armored insect. <gasps> this feels... better. I've never felt so great. And sweet baby Jesus, I will never get over how cool you look. Well, if you think I look cool, you should see yourself. Chad wanders over to a nearby stream and looks at his reflection in the water. Oh. Oh, now this is freaking sweet! Chad's suit is black with silver and gold gauntlets. Greaves lead to matching patches of armor over the knees. A silver, gold, and black armored vest covers his chest, leading to black pauldrons with silver spikes. His helmet is also black, silver, and gold with large, red, insect-like eyes. 
instead of a grasshopper look like Dex, it's more that of a beetle. A horned crest with the appearance of a beetle's jaws extend from the forehead. Looking sharp, for sure. I've never seen this belt used, so I didn't know what to expect, but... But I... Uh, what's that term from the TV? I dig it! You told me before these powers involved teleportation and a mind link of some sort? Like what you did with your telepathy when we first met. Yes. So even when I return home, I'll still be able to provide you with guidance. And you can teleport anywhere on this planet. But for any further, you would need Zordon's assistance. Sweet. So I do have one more question. Why exactly are we called... Riders? Chad walks back over to the training area and takes his phone from his bag. He sees the name, and without realizing, it retracts his helmet, bringing the phone to his ear. Oh, hold that thought there, Hoss. Adam, hey, you are not going to believe this. I'll have to try and believe it later. Listen, we're in the middle of a fight, but Zordon just told us there's another monster attacking Mexico City. There aren't quite as many of us left anymore. We need the Megazord, and we need all of us for it right now. Zordon says he has a communicator for Dex, but he hasn't picked it up yet. Ugh. If you can get in touch with him, you need to get him over there now. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, roger that. I'll call you later. Be safe. Hey, Dex! I know. Trouble. Zordon was just able to reach me through our own mental link. But he's a computer. I, you know what? No, I don't want to know. Well, here's your baptism by fire. Ready for the answer to your last question? Let's ride. It's a good thing you can ride a motorcycle. Dex places his hands to his belt buckle again, and, as if there were a computer image loading, a motorcycle teleports in front of him. It has the look of an armor-plated grasshopper, yet turned into a dirt bike. Oh, dude, is that for me? Uh, no, that's mine. You get your own. Your suit and belt will help. Just think about it. Oh, here goes nothing. Oh shit, this is like my birthday and Christmas all in one. Chad's bike resembles his own motif. It's more of a street bike with red, gold, and black coloring. All right then, to the place you call Mexico City. Where do you all think you're going? Don't you want to be helped out of your skin prisons? Mexico City. Chaos is abound as a monster resembling a spike-riddled pill bug crossed with a professional bodybuilder is destroying all in his path, killing anyone unlucky enough to be close to him. Now, now, don't be scared. Once I eat the bodies, You'll all have served your higher purpose. Now, don't you look delicious? The vile being looms over a defenseless child. He reaches out a spike-covered hand to grab her. But before he can make contact, he's knocked to the side by a sudden impact as a motorcycle collides with him. Go! Holy crap! look like someone shoved 30 pounds of ugly in a five pound sack. You! Uh, you are interrupting my feast! Chad and Dex dismount their bikes and each enter a fighting stance. But they are given a surprise as the monster closes himself up into a massive spiked ball and hurdles towards them! Watch out! Ah! Get up! It's coming back! The ball of nasty spikes stops and begins to make another pass as Chad scrambles to his feet and leaps out of the way. Okay, we need to think. As long as it's in this form, we can't get in to hurt him. Okay, you work on breaking those damn spikes off and I'll keep the bastard busy. Dex nods, reaching to his buckle and pulling outwards. 
A long, thin, sword-like rod materializes as he does. Electro Saber! Okay, you prickly bastard. Let's dance. Hey! This way, you fugly mook. Bet you can't hit me twice. The big bug reacts to the taunt, rolling after Chad again. Dex, meanwhile, swings his weapon at the passing enemy, breaking off several of the large spikes. It veers off its intended course, ramming into a metal pole and breaking off more of the deadly spikes. Well, that's about half, but we need to flush them out. Okay, my turn to do the taunting. Right. Chad picks up a pole from the surrounding debris and enters a stance as if he was a batter in the MLB. How about you try for me, you disgrace to insect kind? Pathetic. All that strength and all you can kill are these humans? You're going to starve, freak. Furious, the monster charges at Dex in a blind rage, not even noticing when Chad breaks off the remaining spikes with the pole. That's right. Come on over, round boy. <laughs> Dex dodges out of the way and the ball crashes into a parked truck. The monster, known as Death Sphere, releases himself from his rolled up form, standing and swaying as if he were dizzy. Oh, you! You are going to taste so good when I eat you in front of this world's leaders. As the monster finishes his statement, both Chad and Dex close the distance. Chad leaps into a kick to the creature's head as Dex rushes in with a punch to the abdominal area. Ah! Hiya! They dodge back out again as the monster swipes out with his massive fists. Okay, Chad, I'm leaving him to you from here on. Prove to me that Adam was right in suggesting you. Prove that I was right to choose you. And prove that belt right for deeming you worthy. Roger that. Get back over here and die, scum! Yeah, if you say so, champ. Chad takes off running toward the beast. As he leaps into the air for another kick, a strong feeling takes over him. His boot begins to glow, the energy radiating into a concentrated point as his kick lands on the intended target of Death Sphere's head. The explosion that follows launches Chad backwards into a flip. As he lands, he sees the spot previously occupied by the monster, filled now only with ashes. Holy Breplort! You did it! You did the rider kick! I did? <laughs> ah, yeah, I did. Wait. What's the rider kick? It's a powerful attack that concentrates the power of the suit with the power of your warrior spirit. And it's all the proof I need that you are ready. Thank you, Dex. That means the world to me. But we should probably be getting out of here now. Chad, smiling under his helmet, strides back to his motorcycle and mounts it. You fool! You sent the wrong beast down there. And why? Why are there two riders down there? As Dragon paces furiously, he takes time to kick out at the crew members nearby, which he has dubbed Maggots. My lord, I thought that particular bug would have killed Dex for sure. My humblest of apologies. As for the second rider, my lord, I didn't know. I thought all the riders' belts were lost. We had no way of knowing the prince out of that secret one. I see. I see what's happening. Prince Dex is leaving a protege here on this world so he can return home. Well, let's give him a reason to go home. Then let's punish this planet and its new rider for thinking they can stand in our way. And I suppose fulfill our agreement with Vilius and Zed. Yes, my lord. I'll have the maggots resume training as we wait for the transport beams to recharge. Very well. I'm going to retire to my cabin. I am not to be disturbed. Yes, my lord.
The very next morning, still riding the endorphins of the victory from the day before, Chad sits at the table with his smiling family, all having just wished Hal Jaeger a very happy birthday, and presenting him with the custom tool set. Oh, great gravy. Thank you, kids. From now on, everything I make or fix, I'll use these tools. Oh, and I get real butter and syrup with breakfast? Oh, Barbara, you do love me. Oh, golly jeepers. I could... Yes, Daddy, we love you very much, and today's all about you. Until my date tonight. LOL. Did you just say LOL? Oh, my, Molly! Doesn't that mean Lucifer, our Lord? <laughs> no, Mama. It's laugh out loud, and nobody says it. They only text it. <laughs> Old people like you do. I say it. Chad stands to kiss his mother on the forehead and give his dad a hug. Just then, his phone buzzes. He checks it to see a text from Adam. Thank you for taking care of that yesterday. Dex told Zordon all about it. Tell your dad happy birthday. Oh, and good job. He ends it with a wink emoji. Chad's smile grows as he puts his phone back in his pocket. Uh, hey, Dad? Adam says happy birthday. Adam who? Do I know an Adam? Does he work at the hardware store? Is it at a... <laughs> no, Pop. You don't know him. He... Uh, well... Oh, this is gonna be fun. Molly leans forward, eagerly awaiting the awkward family moment she decided was a birthday miracle. Soon her brother regales his parents with a heavily edited version of his experience with a young man who lives all the way in California. That night, after cake and more presents, the youngest Jaeger leaves on her date. The eldest two retire to bed early, and Chad sits on the front porch of his parents' house. Hey Chad. Evening Dex, what's up? I'm here to tell you we won't be training anymore. I... I have to leave for home as soon as possible. Dragon's forces have been bolstered. They have resumed their attacks and my people need me. I understand, Dex, but are you sure I'm ready? Without a doubt. You are one of the finest warriors I've trained, and I'm proud of you. I'm also proud to call you both a writer and a friend. Thank you. You said that we're linked now, and even all that distance we'll still be able to communicate? Yes, the belts will help with that. And speaking of communication, Zoran sent this for you just in case. Dex hands Chad a communicator matching that of the Power Rangers, but customized to resemble his belt buckle. Nice. So I can call the Rangers and they can call me to let me know when I'm needed, right? Exactamundo, as your Earth kids say. It will allow you to access the command center as well. But try to be sparing with that unless they invite you or it's an emergency. They have lives. And enemies of their own. Word up, Home Slice. What? <laughs> Nothing. I mean, yes, of course. Dex... I don't know how I can ever thank you. No. Thank you, Chad. You and the Rangers have reminded me I'm not alone in fighting the evils of this universe. Whether it's Dragon, Zed, the freaky damn clown in the sewers from that movie Rocky showed me, <sighs> or, uh, or any other cur. We're in this together, and you're now my family. So, thank you. The two men hug each other. When they pull apart, Dex makes his way to his motorcycle, mounts it, and drives off down the street. Chad watches the rider from Edenoy and his bike shift to what looks like liquid light, then vanish. Okay, well, here we go. Chad walks over to his own motorcycle, starts it up, and decides he could really go for a bite to eat at a pizza place he knows. In Angel Grove, California. Let's ride. <laughs>